beekeeper who's busy as a bee, an activist who's an herbalist, and a businesswoman who battles big business. Laura is an 11th generation Cape Codder born and raised on a self-sustaining sheep farm in East Dennis. An Olympian horseback rider and an acupressure massage therapist, Laura has been an organic horticulturist since 1992, creating beauty with nature through her East Ham based business, Little Field Landscapes. I was organic before organic became organic, she always says. Right? There's something magical about helping plants grow for they heal us and help us survive. Being a steward of our circle of life is my greatest pleasure and purpose. There is a way to create an organic protocol for all land types to allow your land to sustain itself. Now take that same approach and apply it to your own body. Feed yourself the highest quality organic nutrition possible, allowing the potential of the way you perform to be at your greatest possibility in this lifetime. You are what you eat, after all. Um, Laura continues to educate herself and others to share the natural ways of helping our landscapes become strong and sustainable for she believes that she will help us be stronger as a race for future, gener for future generations. Being non-toxic in your body and on your land is the best thing we can do for every creature living in our environment and to protect our precious drinking water. And if anybody knows Laura, they know that she is just tireless and indefatigable in her, her efforts to, to hold big business accountable to those standards that she just laid out. So it is my honor to offer um, Laura Kelly, the Community Activist of the Year Award. Laura? centered on what's important, those issues that we talked about. And so tonight, we recognize two great women for their activism and their involvement, and it gives me great pleasure. Uh, I have a congressional recognition, it's signed by me, it's not by the president or anyone else. <laughs> but it did come out of a, uh, it came out of a Democratic House. Uh, and it's presented Laura Kelly in recognition of uh, being the recipient of the Cape Cod Islands Democratic Council 2019 Community so uh, Service oh. Award winner. Congratulations. <laughs> after work and then just keep working and I got a little email from Robin Hubbard <laughs> that said by the way this is what's coming <laughs> I read it twice you know? <laughs> um, so thank you CIDC and everybody in this room for caring I think that's where all of this begins is we care and each one of us matters I can't say this enough. You now I get into you matter and you matter and you matter. Could you imagine if we all did one thing? So I'm a crazy activist, right? I have to give some <laughs> sort of something for all of us to do. What about wallet activism? Okay. Can we make this up as we go along? Yeah, Wallet activism. So I'm by heart, by nature, an inventor and a creator. I'm always trying to find solutions for problems. And you know, I'm a landscape architect by trade, and so you know, I get the phone call. This is happening in my yard, and nobody can fix it. I'm like, great, I love it. Let's do this together. So wallet activism. Your dollars, your vote. Every single day, we vote with our dollar. And by chance, I like water. How about you guys? <laughs> I think on that level, men and women are created equal. <laughs> and so I just chose one thing. I love a lot of things. I chose one thing to protect. And I think it was about 10 years ago, maybe more, it was Diane Turco who really showed me the common sense of using your voice. And that's where it opened me up to a whole new world. And I just want to thank you, Diane. Thank you. Keep going, never stop. <laughs> And 
so I picked water. And I really just play with it. You know, how can we protect it more? How can we do more every single day to lessen our impact of, of, above our greatest natural resource? It's only 20 feet on average below us between sandy soil. And it's been so fun for me to learn, to listen, to understand what's going on outside as we're doing what we're doing inside every day. It's naturally happening. I'm going to back up for a minute and say, I am the 11th generation born and raised here on Cape Cod in, in Dennis. I feel like a steward. We are all stewards of our time. If we don't actually protect our greatest natural resources, who will? So to, that, that's a big load, right? Who's going to do this if we don't? So I lighten it up with these simple acts of kindness we can do every single day like shifting habits, shifting the way we shop and purchase, making sure our money stays on Cape Cod so more people can live here. That's just like the biggest thing. If our money stayed on Cape Cod, like no chain, don't, don't spend your money in chain stores, restaurants, you know, go on Amazon. Think about that. Right? Farmers markets. Um, there's so many local people that live here that are artists that need our support. And if we could just just be wallet activists, <laughs> uh, can, I just think next generations will have a better chance here. And it is up to us. We are the stewards of this time. <laughs> so I'm the president of POCA, Protect Our Cape Cod Aquifer, 10 years ago. Uh, concerned citizens got together and said, what can we do? How can we do this? So we gave ourselves a little name and a little label and time happens. It's almost been a decade. It's amazing. So our latest um, mission started in November where we've been going to Cape Towns, <laughs> boards of selectmen, asking permission. This is the way I say it. We give a presentation saying, you own a lot of land in town, don't you? And they do. Oh my goodness, there's so much land they own in town. There's cemeteries, there's golf courses, you know, of course, school grounds, walkways, <coughs> parks, you know, conservation land. There's a lot of land that each town owns. They're responsible for that land. How do they maintain that land? So I'm asking, all towns on Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard to remove one thing in how they maintain their land. Glyphosate. The active ingredient in 750 herbicides. So how fun am I learning all this, right? Pesticides, the umbrella, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, there's other sides underneath it, right? <laughs> underneath the larger umbrella are emerging contaminants, contaminants of emerging concern. There are many things, PFOAs, PFOS, fire retardants, pharmaceuticals, we could do on this whole list of all these other things that were showing up where? In our drinkable water here on Cape Cod. What can we do about this, wallet activists? <laughs> so, so I think it's really simple in the big picture of it all. We see things off of Cape Cod, we see things spiraling down. The EPA is not standing up when glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup and Rodeo and many other things, is proven harmful. Just within the last year, I've got 12 studies and abstracts proving harm to pollinators that we need to survive, people. There's 13,400 more cases lined up right now against Monsanto's Roundup. What? So finally the people are able to prove harm and they're standing up. Two court cases already went through, as we know, $80 million. People are getting recognized. This is a problem. What are we going to do about it? So I go up to the Massachusetts Pesticide Board 
in Boston four times a year. They meet four times a year for two hours. I get an hour. And educate them that their written policies and regulations do not fit the ecology of Cape Cod. Again, how fun is this to learn, right, along the way? So they have a 50-foot rule, 50 feet, every source is not to spray or herbicide so long rights of white power lines within 50 feet of a private well 100 feet within a public well well what happens when the drinkable water is 20 feet below that on average on cape cod power line oh we didn't think with it it doesn't say horizontal orbit well, what are you going to do about it <laughs> they've done nothing it's been years three years so far so i i decided to come to the towns and do my what i call grassroots efforts and knock on the town's doors and go to the selectmen and say, you can have a choice. You could volunteer because you can't ban the sale or use of these products. Pesticides. Oh, we can ban the sale and use of plastic bags, plastic straws, plastic bottles, and no cigarette smoothing on beaches. But we cannot ban the sale or use of glyphosate products because of the preemption law in the state of Massachusetts. But we can volunteer because we're wild activists. <laughs> and we can volunteer not to use these products. So I'm asking the towns to volunteer. And how fun is this? They are. <laughs> Granted, it hasn't been that easy. <laughs> Some towns, Chatham, I'm just going to give you kudos, in one hour, in the room, had their Okay, so we're just going to try to do this quickly. So we have boards, right? Boards of selectmen, boards of health, and CONSCOM in each town. And then we have departments that actually maintain all the town-owned land. DPW, Parks and Services, Water Departments, and Conservation. And so how fun is it to realize that the selectmen don't know what the departments are doing? <laughs> Get to bring our community together closer all about glyphosate yay <laughs> and so chatham in one hour had somebody from conscom boards of health dpw in the room when i was on the agenda with the board of selectmen so the selectmen were just able to say hey bob come on up why don't you tell us what, what are you using out there anyway and fascinating in one hour they made a decision they're writing a regulation they're, they volunteered they're not using glyphosate and chatham together <laughs> so can i do shout out of towns really quickly so there's a difference between regulation writing at boards of health is the, what i really want and then there's policies at the selectmen which just doesn't hold as much Teeth, let's say so if anybody is harmed and there is a court issue down the line if you have a written regulation at Board of Health you will be able to stand up in court but not if it's a policy with selectmen fascinating to learn and so policies at the boards of selectmen so far Wellfleet, Orleans and East Ham thank them ah here We've got Sandwich Board of Health, Harwich Board of Health, Chatham Board of Health, and Falmouth just rolled in a couple weeks ago, Board of Health. <laughs> Biggest thing to be doing. Working closely with Barnstable and Yarmouth right now. Provincetown's going to roll in. Oh, and Truro also is Board of Health. So I don't know what that equals, but we're getting closer. I would love to say in 2019, all children will be safe on town owned land throughout all of Cape Cod or Martha's Vineyard. This is all efforts through Poco Cape Cod uh, to protect drinking water. I mean, the ultimate thing is developing children, of course, towns from liability issues, and our water source. So let's all leave here with something to do, vote with our dollars, and be wallet activists. Thank you. Everyone. <laughs>